I now request Right Honourable Madam My dear friend Minakshi, Justice Prasayat, my dear friend Mr. Lavasa and Mr. Chakravati, and of course the President of the IOD, General Alawalia. I would like to first and foremost congratulate Ashokji and Pradeepji for their wonderful way that they have led this conference to time and with fabulous speakers and distinguished guests. All of you here today are either giving something to us or you will be taking something away. And you've been served yet again another fabulous treat from the panel of distinguished speakers this evening. And the reason for that is that each one takes you through a very different journey, but ultimately the outcomes are the same. We cannot do business as usual. We need to change. We need to be responsible. The corporate world has got a large part to play, as has governments, the public sector. And together, we're going to be able to make sure that this planet is something that all of us leave better. Mr. Chakravarti, you're absolutely right. We don't want to leave a planet that is worse than the, the planet we came into for our children and grandchildren. But unfortunately, that's exactly what we are currently doing. And whether it's the, the, the planning and the industrial, um, industrialization of the past or what we're doing today, ultimately, each one of us individually is responsible for what we do on this planet. And therefore, each one of us has to take responsibility for that. And I listened very carefully to absolutely every single word spoken today. And Manakshi, my dear friend, you took me through such a journey that I couldn't possibly emulate it. But I do know one thing, that we both share the outcomes of a better planet. And when you're in government, when you're a politician, the one thing you take up is to make sure that that positive change is available for everyone. And I know that as a politician in UK, we've also had hard discussions on how do we get people to start recognizing the change that they need to make. And part of it was the government taking responsibility and introducing some laws. And again, laws have got to be laws that are not burdensome on the corporate world. So we then looked at how we reduced regulations and burden by removing a two-out, one-in rule, where for every one rule that came in new, two old rules had to be removed. So there's lots of things governments can do to help the corporate sector, but the corporate sector ultimately is going to be the sector with its investment that really does change the name of this game, the planet. The planet, of course, will regenerate. The planet is going to go nowhere. But with another 2 billion people coming on board in another 10, 20 years, that's another 2 billion people that need to be fed, watered, and housed. And unless we have proper urban planning, rural planning, education, healthcare systems, food security, water management, we are all, globally, we are all going to find that we're in deep trouble. So it's not a responsibility for one country. It's a global responsibility, and it was raised rightly that there are two important events coming this year. They've been mentioned throughout the day. And in fact, Minister Javedka mentioned it this morning, that the climate change um, talks in 2015, December, and September, the Sustainable Development Goals. These are for all countries to be able to put forward what they themselves are going to sign up to, not just for their citizens of their individual countries, but the world as a whole. So we have some responsibilities. But the one thing that I would like everyone to take away from this is that unless we believe all people are equal, deserve to be treated equally, have rights to things equally, then to be quite frank, all of what you do vanishes. And it vanishes because unless we educate people to make them understand what they have is not finite, that it is going to, it is finite, it is going to disappear, we cannot get the changes that we desperately need. 
And so educating people, whether they're in rural India, rural UK, rural anywhere in the world, whether we have educated women, and again, I will make this a plea to you all, unless you really make sure that women are elevated upwards, that they're given responsibilities, that they're given ownership, that they're given a place at the top table, you will constantly have the same discussions forevermore because women's thinking completely is different from men's. And the reason for that is, if you look at how your mothers were, they are nurturers, nurturers of the family, nurturers of the planet. They will be nurturers to relate them. But I really want to congratulate the IOD for recognizing those people to make them showcase so that people can take away lessons learned. Because the best way to learn something and then put it into practice is to see how it works somewhere else. And therefore, it is great it is a great pleasure and privilege for me to be here, and I do go away tomorrow thinking that there is hope everywhere when you have companies who come up to the mark to do it in the corporate world. And I will leave you with two thoughts. I am proud to share the ancestry that you and I share, Manakshi, because it was an ancestry, it was an ancestry that didn't like waste. It was an ancestry that appreciated, you didn't need community centers to meet people, you went to people's homes. You met people in their houses and socialized in a social manner. I'm proud to belong to an ancestry that has plenty of gray matter. What I'm not so proud of is how easily we let it waste. And therefore, it is really important. I am a great follower of Mahatma Gandhi, and the reason why I am is because as a kid in UK, I had no role models to follow. So I looked to the history books to see the great people. And the great people who taught me was, if I want to be seeing change, then I need to be that change. Thank you very much.